Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're just going to have a little bit of a further look at the subject of the neutral current in a three-phase system. So we've seen in previous videos that in a balanced three-phase system, and that is where you've got the same amount of current in all three phases of the three-phase system, that there is no current flowing in the neutral, that the neutral current is effectively zero. Now, what I've done is I've created here a graph using a piece of graphing software uh, called Desmos, as I think they pronounce it in America. I normally call it Desmos, uh, desmos.com. And what this does is it helps us to visualize how those sine waves of the three phase system are interacting with each other. So what I've done here is I've created a graph where I can adjust the amount of current represented by our sine wave. So if I take L1 here and I slide this up here, you can see there that we've got our uh, L1 current there. And it's going to peak out there at 10 amps. So at the top of the graph there, you can see there that we've got 10 amps. So don't worry about this number here. This number here is the important one. It's peaking at 10 amps. So we'll assume that 10 amps of current is flowing. Now again, there's uh, people out there who will say, well, that's not the RMS value of this uh, circuit, but we'll we'll cover that in a future video. This is just illustrative of how this is working. Now, what is actually significant here is that here there are two sine waves, but they're lying perfectly on top of each other. So this sine wave represents how the current is behaving in L1, and it also represents how the current is behaving in the neutral. And in fact, if I turn off the neutral uh, graph there, if I turn that waveform off temporarily, you can see that hidden behind there is the L1 sine wave. So this represents how the current is behaving inside L1. So from this we can see that when you only have one of the phases connected, the current in the neutral conductor will be the same as the current in the line conductor. So I'll just turn the neutral current back on there. Now the neutral current is the combination of the current that flows through L1, L2 and L3. So let's leave L1 on 10 amps and now let's crank up the current flowing through L2. So now let's imagine that we've got uh, current starting to flow in L2. So this might be a three phase system uh, that you've got installed in a building where one lighting circuit has been turned on connected to L1 and perhaps a lighting circuit on L2 hasn't yet been connected up. So if I start to increase the amount of current being drawn on L2, so let's say we've turned on this uh, kind of hypothetical lighting circuit and the current is flowing, can you see here that now this black waveform that's forming represents the amount of current flowing inside L2. And you can see that that's peaking at this point here. But look at what's happening to the neutral. As I am adding current into L2, so as current starts to flow in L2, we can see that the neutral current is starting to reduce. So now the neutral current is no longer peaking at 10 amps, it's peaking at 8.75 amps. So what's actually happening here is that the graphing software is taking every point along the L1 waveform, that's the red waveform, and it's adding every point on the black waveform to it, and that is giving us the neutral waveform. It's giving us this blue waveform here. And in fact, if I just turn on uh, this uh, straight line here, this is just a reference line that we can use. If we look here, you see here we've got a point here, which is 1.702 on L2, and it is 5.446 on L1. If we add this value to this value, in other words, if we add this number, 5.446, to 1.702, we will come out with this number here, which is 7.149. Now, that might not be exactly right on the last digit there because these are rounded off on the screen. However, the graphing calculator keeps much more accurate values. So that's why that last number perhaps doesn't look exactly perfect. But the point is, is that we could move this line anywhere along here, take those points and add them together. So a case in point, an interesting point there, is where these cross over at this point here. So if we look at this point, you can see that the black conductor L2 is at zero amps at this point on the waveform. And both the uh, red conductor uh, L1 that we've got here, the red waveform, has a value of 8.66. And actually, 
the blue waveform is also at 8.66 at that point. So 0 plus 8.66 gives us 8.66. So that's what's happening there. Every point on this black waveform is being added to every point on this red waveform and the resulting number is being plotted which gives us the blue waveform. In reality what's happening is that inside the neutral connection of our star connected three phase system is that the current in L1 is meeting the current in L2 and giving the neutral current as you can see here. So we'll just turn off our reference line there and let's continue to add current into L2. So watch what happens to the blue waveform, the neutral current, as I add current into L2. So as L2 gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see there's something interesting starts to happen around here to the neutral current. It starts to go back up again. And as L2 reaches its maximum value, look at that, you can see that it is peaking now at the same value. And actually, if you remember in a previous video, at the end of the video, we had a little look at what happens when you've got uh, two uh, phases connected with the same load connected up and we found that whatever the current is in L1 if we have 10 amps and whatever the current is in L2 if we've got 10 amps if that current there and that current there is the same then we find that the neutral current has the same value as well. But now where this starts to get really interesting is when we start to add current into L3. So as we now introduce current into L3 so at the minute this section of the circuit has been disconnected effectively. Watch what happens to the neutral current, so watch the peak of the neutral waveform as we start to add in current into L3. So as the current in L3, that green sine wave, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's happening to the peak of the neutral? You can see it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And of course we're seeing there as well what happens is that again we're taking every point on the black waveform, every point on the red waveform and every point on the green waveform and we are adding all of those values together and plotting the resultant waveform. So let's turn on our reference line and let's bring that back down to somewhere like that. So I think we're at 30 degrees there so I might need to just type that in if I can't get that to settle on 30. A little bit fiddly, there we go. So again, let's look at this. So if we look at the green waveform, that's at minus six. And then we look at uh, the red waveform is at five at this point, and the black waveform is also at five. If we do minus six, add five, we get minus one, and then add five again, and we get four, we get the resultant current in the neutral. And then if we continue to bring up the current in L3 until it is exactly 10 volts, sorry, 10 amps, so it's matching the current flowing in L1 and L2, what's happening to our neutral current? Well, eventually it drops down to zero. So once all of the currents in L1, L2 and L3 are the same, we can see that the neutral current drops down to zero. That sine wave has been completely smoothed out and there is no current flowing in the neutral conductor, which I think is kind of beautiful. So again, we could do a little experiment here where we could take any point along this waveform. So let's just randomly stop this anywhere at this point here. If we look at the values that we've got, so we've got 3.09 in L3, we've got 6.691 in L3, uh, one and then we've got in L2 we've got minus 9.781. Now if I take these three values and add them together what do you think I'm going to get? Well let's have a quick look at that if I bring up the calculator. So here's our rather lovely Casio FX 85 GT plus emulator and I'm just going to add these three values together so I've got 6.691 I'm going to add to that because this is a positive number, which is why we're adding this on, 3.09. And then I'm going to add on to this minus 9.781. So if you add a negative number, you subtract it. So that's minus 9.781. And if I hit the equals button, you can see there that the answer is zero. And I could do that at any point along these three waveforms. And I would find that the current in L1 added to the current in L2, 
added to the current in L3 would always be exactly zero, which is, again, really quite a beautiful thing to behold. So that is just another representation of the reason why the current inside a neutral conductor is equal to zero in a three-phase balanced load. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to have a little play with the graph that I've created here, uh, I'll make this available in the link below. So there should be uh, a link in the description. So if you click on that, it'll take you to the graph and you can have a little play with it. And uh, hopefully that'll be quite useful for you. Uh, and if you'd like to use this in your classrooms during teaching or anything like that, then uh, please feel free to do so. If you could just give me a credit, I'd be enormously grateful. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.